You right, guys? Can you can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So, what I want to do is uh, I just want to say um, to everyone that can hear me, uh, please mute your mics. Please make sure your mics are muted. Make sure all your mics are muted, and uh, you don't need to turn on your uh, your, uh, your your video either. Um, so, I'm going to get started now. Welcome to day one of the two day uh, webinar, uh, webinar right guys please mute your mics please mute your mics mute your mics mute your mics thank you thank you thank you thank you right um, welcome to the first day of the two day webinar with myself and I'm going to be covering um, the three steps to generating profitable trade ideas yeah I'm gonna have a Q&A at the end of the webinar so uh, any questions you do have I'm going to uh, um, you can ask them then. Um, I will do a bit of a learning check as well. So um, at the end of each slide, because there are some a bit of kind of complex um, fundamentals that you know I'm trying to simplify, and not everyone's going to follow, probably due to language barriers, etc. So from that perspective, I'm going to try to make sure that everyone is following along. At least the majority of people are following along um, after you know a certain period of time after we've covered a certain step. And uh, any questions you do have, um, please type it in the uh, the chat box, and uh, I'll try and just recover it just in case and make sure you're all following. So day one is with me today right now, which we're going to get started in a sec. But uh, day two is going to be with Mark Chapman, and he's going to be um, covering. Uh, really the the market makers and really identifying the the footprints of the market makers and it's not anything like you know what you see on on YouTube or TikTok or anything like that it's totally it's real the real business model right it's not the the, the theoretical side of things and I do have Mark here with me Mark if you want to unmute your mic and uh, and give him a little bit about uh, what they'll be getting tomorrow as well uh, hello 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 guys yep. how are you doing can hear you uh, let me know if you guys can hear me okay. Yep. Is that coming through? Yeah, there? it's coming through fine. Yeah, everyone's saying Super yes. Super good. 67 people on the call. That's awesome. Welcome, everybody. And um, yeah, as Leon said, Mark. Oh, Mark, you just dropped off. <laughs> can you hear me? There we go. I'm back. Yeah, yeah, there I'm we go. Back. Yeah, you're back. Yeah. Hey guys, sorry about that. Yeah, so just to just to sort of uh, give you a little bit of a brief intro before you guys get going, um, tomorrow we'll be holding uh, I'll be holding a class on the uh, the footprints of the market whales and how you can learn uh, to see uh, where they are in the markets and how you can position yourself to uh, trade alongside them. Uh, today is all about the fundamentals, and uh, Leon's going to um, go over the three steps for generating profitable trade ideas. It's a, it's massively helpful even if you uh, do understand institutional trading strategies uh, to still have a fundamental bias uh, to then go on to a chart with an idea of where you want to be trading in terms of directional bias prior to then deploying those institutional uh, strategies in, in the market. It just, it, it makes a great trader a super trader. Um, so I hope you enjoy uh, today's session. Tomorrow's session will be with me. Uh, 8 p.m. London, it's exactly the same time. And we'll be going over um, essentially uh, how you can see the uh, big money liquidity providers, essentially the market makers. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, before being able to see them, you've got to understand how to interpret uh, order flow in, in the market, actual order flow, not uh, footprint charts or the various types of uh, trading software out there uh, that supposedly shows you um, order flow on, on, on your uh, trading platform. Quite the opposite. This is the purest version of it, how to actually understand the mechanics of price action. And then once you've sort of got the grasp of that, I'm going to be introducing you to the idea that the market is indeed a, an auction. Uh, and, and from there, we can then see, uh, learn to understand and see where uh, the big market makers, liquidity providers, are positioned in the markets, and I'm going to actually show you their number one, uh, number one footprint. So uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you guys tomorrow. Have a great session today. 
Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll I'll see you guys tomorrow. Enjoy tonight. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. And um, and yeah, guys. So uh, let's get started because I know many of you, uh, depending on where you are in the world, it's probably late. You know, uh, I had a few people message me saying that it's like you know two, three in the morning and stuff like that. So I'll try and get this. Um, uh, fly through it but in a sense of you know like I said no man left behind or at least the majority of you anyway can uh, follow along right so first things first again for those of you who have just uh, come in please ensure that your mics are off remain off and uh, that you don't you know turn on your video um, and uh, yeah we'll just keep it like that and uh, yeah any questions we'll leave them either to the end or whenever we uh, uh, come to uh, maybe the end of a certain section and I'll ask if there's anything that you uh, are not understanding and I'll try and go over it again, right? So hopefully I should cover this within the next uh, hour um, or so and then maybe the Q&A might last a little, little longer. But anyways, let's get into it. So please note as well, it's not necessary to know everything about fundamental analysis. We can literally go down the rabbit hole when it comes to fundamental analysis. There's so many things to learn. And it's not important to know everything about everything, right? What I'm trying to do is I'm going to get you to the place where you literally just focus on what is the most important to make your trading decisions as well as what really moves the market, yeah? That is what is the most important thing, yeah? So we're going to eliminate the noise, ignore the distractions, and really focus on what the central banks the financial institutions, institutional flow, you know, what they're mainly focused on, yeah, and what they are focused on overall, yeah, so let's get into it, hi or hi everyone, um, so is this how you trade fundamental analysis, fundamental analysis is really touted online as uh, going to Forex Factory and looking at news releases and then buying and selling based off of whether it was expected or whether it wasn't expected, right? Um, and so that is not fundamental analysis. That is not how to trade fundamental analysis. Um, you know, I think probably maybe 99% of, you know, uh, videos. And by the way, I've been around for a little while. I've probably watched, you know, all of the videos. I say all of the videos, but that's a bit of an exaggeration. But I've worked many of the videos that you guys have watched on YouTube back in the day. And um, I have a little browse on YouTube from every now and then to see if the quality has changed. And to be fair, from when I started uh, trading back in uh, 2012, 2013, nothing's really changed apart from um, maybe technical strategies um, and uh, technical technical strategies are a dime a dozen, right? But this is not how you trade uh, fundamental analysis. If it was, we'd all be trillionaires, right? Anybody can, you know, buy and sell um, good news and bad news. But we're all here, right? We all understand that there's obviously more to it than just doing this. No matter what, you know, someone on YouTube says, um, it's not, this isn't necessarily fundamental analysis trading. But what is is really identifying currency divergences and differentials. It is the most, it's really important that you understand this concept, yeah? So currencies, as we know, pretty much currency trading 101 is currencies are trading, traded in pairs. But how it's not viewed or what people may not know or maybe just kind of disregard is that, in fact, it is a, a straight one-on-one -on -one fight, yeah? Sorry. <clears throat> It's a straight one-on-one -on -one fight. So, you know, it's it's really about which currency is appreciating or strong versus a currency that is weak or depreciating, yeah? And what we want to do in currency when, when we're developing a trade idea is look for divergences or differentials. So divergence really is to, um, in case you don't, your English isn't the greatest, it's really to understand um, that divergence is um, where, uh, I guess, currencies are moving or, or extending in different directions. Yeah, differentials is just the difference between the two. But what's more important than differentials is the divergence, right? And I'm going to show you pretty much the three steps. So when we have a strong divergence, yeah, as far as, you know, a really strong currency or, or an appreciating currency uh, versus a depreciating currency or a weak currency, that's where you get trending price, 
yeah? And when you have a weak divergence, yeah? So for example, there are two strong currencies versus maybe two weak currencies or two appreciating currencies versus two depreciating currencies. That's where you generally have, um, I guess, what Mark would call more of an auction. Um, you might you might know it as a ranging market, sideways moving market, an accumulation phase, etc. Right, but it's really uh, where you get non-trending price over a certain period. Now I'm talking about as well um, applying fundamentals to the medium to long term um, price action. Short in the short term, and you know for for a day or for a week, yeah. Um, fundamentals, and I guess I'll get into this maybe a bit later, but. Fundamentals can still be applied, but you have to have more of a medium to longer term bias, medium to long term, meaning, you know, a month to maybe three months, six months um, time horizon. Right. Because in the short term, as Mark will go over tomorrow, um, there's there's liquidity, you know, um, uh, the market generally is looking for liquidity, market makers, pricing, fair value auctions, etc. And you'll find that out, you know, tomorrow. But from a macro perspective, a macroeconomic perspective, you know, um, this is what we're looking towards, the big trends. Yeah. And so step one is really if, if is really identifying interest rate divergence. Yeah. If you want a shortcut, if you want a shortcut as to understand which currency you should be buying against which currency you should be selling as far as divergences, it's looking at interest rate divergence. Yeah, you must look at interest rate divergences. And all fun, all roads lead to interest rates. Yeah, meaning what that means is, is that you've got you know, many uh, different macroeconomic data points. For example, you've got retail sales, you've got home buying, you've got... Um... Home buying. Yeah. Hello, guys, please, can you mute your mics? If you don't mute your mic and you keep, you know, repeat offending, I'm going to kick you from the... Uh... From the from from the call, so please just ensure that your mic is uh, is muted. Please, please, Justice Kofi, ensure that your mic is muted. If you don't mute your mic and you keep disrupting, I'm going to kick you. Right. So, all roads lead to interest rates. So there are many different data points that we look at. For example, on um, on uh, Forex Factory. But all roads lead to what the central bank is going to do with interest rates. Yeah. And central banks manage and influence currency valuation. Right. Meaning they either want to appreciate or depreciate the currency or keep it the valuation as it is by either increasing, decreasing or holding interest rates. Yeah. So all roads lead to what the central bank is going to do, whether you're looking at, like I said, retail sales, whether you're looking at manufacturing, whether you're looking at producer prices index, whether you're looking at employment, unemployment, all roads lead to. Or all those roads lead to what the central bank is going to do. So if you wanted the, the, the shortest cut shortest way to understand which way you should be buying or selling is look at what the central bank is doing with or central banks are doing with their um with their interest rates and it really in case you don't know an increase in interest rates is currency appreciation and a decrease in um in uh, in interest rates is is it tends to lead to currency depreciation yeah not saying that you know price is going to go up every single day every single week every single you know month for example right it's a bit more complex than that but the general path of least resistance will be currency appreciation if they high crates and if they cut rates then you should see currency depreciation yeah now um interest rates just in case you don't know think about it like this is Obviously, interest rates is the return that you get for um, depositing your money in a bank. Yeah. Um, so an increase in rates is basically the yield that you're going to receive for depositing, you know, money into your bank account. So think about it like this, where you have two banks on a high street. Yeah. And one is offering 5% interest rate. So, you know, you're looking to you know put your savings somewhere. One is offering 5%. One is offering 1%. Everyone's going to go to where they're going to get the, the most yield right the most return on their on their on their money so the demand for the higher rate yeah in simple terms will cause you know uh demand which demand will cause 
you know, the currency appreciation. And it's the same thing in currency land. When you're looking at it from an international investor perspective, investors generally will put their money into certain currencies or into all currencies, right? And so if you have a, 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 a central bank, right, or a currency that is, you know, giving you, you know, maybe 4%, to, to hold that currency versus another currency that is, you know, offering you maybe 0%, yeah? The money is going to flow into the one that is um, the higher interest rate, yeah? So, again, the shortcut is really to listen or to read central bank statements and news articles to determine what central banks are likely to do with interest rates, yeah? Whether they're likely to hike, hike, hold, or cut. So raise interest rates, cut interest rates, or, 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 uh, or cut interest rates, right? So that's the shortcut of it all, yeah? But you might be thinking, well, what determines the central bank's decision to hike, hold, or cut rates? How do we get ahead of the central banks? How do we know when they are going to do it or when they're likely to do it? So step two, yeah, is understanding the business cycle, gross domestic product business cycle. So divergences and differentials, yeah, is, is really important to understand it. So gross domestic product is the value of an economy's goods and services, yeah? And the GDP and I guess the business cycle can be described as uh, having phases. So we have the boom, contraction, recession, bust, slump, recovery, expansion, and then back to boom again. And it literally goes round and round and round in circles. So boom, contraction, recession, bust, slump, recovery, expansion, boom, contraction. And that is really the cycle. Yeah. And it's important to understand that in the recovery or expansion or boom phase of the business cycle, yeah, business and currency demand increases. So look at it like this. If you're again an international investor, yeah, and you want to invest in certain economies, and you know, uh, you've got you know certain businesses that you want to set up, for example, and you're thinking, well, should I go to Europe or should I go to the UK? Yeah. Now. The, U the UK have got, you know, we're, we're in the maybe the expansion or the boom phase, right? There's lots of demand, there's growth there, you know, it, businesses are growing, etc., etc. My people are spending money, people are borrowing, lending, etc., right? The economy is doing really, really good. Versus setting up, for example, in Europe, where they're maybe heading into a recession, right? Where they're heading into a recession, where people are not spending money, businesses are going bust, and, you know, there's not too much going on, right? We all know what recessions and, and bust slump, you know, uh, feels like, right? We went through it just with, uh, you know, COVID in, in 2020, right? So where are you likely to place your money? And I guess it's a rhetorical question, uh, but it's going to be, everyone's going to flood into the economy where you've got growth, yeah? And that creates not only business demand, but it creates currency demand because in order to do business in that currency, yeah, you're going to have to buy it, right? You're going to have to buy that currency. So from that perspective, you can see the divergences. So what you ultimately, and the differentials, I guess, so ultimately what you want to try to do, the first step you want to do is look towards is understanding where a country potentially is, sorry, in its uh, business cycle. Is it growing? Is it in the recovery, expansion, boom phase of the business cycle? Or is it heading into a recession, bust, slump cycle of the business um, of the business cycle? And you can find that out literally just by uh, reading, you know, the news, looking at the data, right? So GDP business cycle divergences, yeah. So remember this: central banks typically increase in, um, increase interest rates during the recovery, expansion, and the boom phases of the economic cycle, yeah. And central banks will typically decrease interest rates during contraction, recession, bust slump phases of the economic cycle. So when we're talking about, again, divergences or differentials, yeah, once we know where a where an economy is, yeah, then we kind of have a clue as to what the central bank is typically going to do, whether they're going to hold or hike. Yeah, when the economy is doing really good, 
or in their recovery expansion phase, and they're likely to potentially cut rates during you know economic downturns, contractions, bust or slump phases, right? So many of you obviously you know uh, um, uh, would have obviously uh, been paying attention to COVID, right? But how many of you? you know, we're paying attention to what the central bank was doing, you know, during that time in, in you know, in 2020 in March and what uh, central banks did with interest rates. Yeah, they literally, they, uh, the, the central banks all around the world started to cut interest rates. Yeah. So just as a, as a rule of thumb, yeah, meaning that just what typically happens, we know if the central bank or the, the economy is heading into a recession yeah potentially they generally want to cut rates and if we are and if an economy is expanding or in the recovery or the boom phase then central banks will typically increase interest rates so you can look for again the divergence right so gdp business cycle divergence differentials that is what we need to do in a really kind of simplified form yeah does everyone is everyone following along yeah if the majority of you are following along then i will continue on if there's maybe one or two that are not unfortunately i'm going to have to just continue um everyone's following along you can type yes why in the uh, chat box all clear brilliant all good all good frobby excellent welcome frobby thomas excellent all right brilliant 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 so divergences and differentials that is you know, and it's not me saying this, by the way, it's not my theory. This is, you know, economic theory. These are these, this is the rules to the fundamental game. Yeah. So here's an example, right, of the of GDP business cycle and I guess divergence and differentials. And what we're looking at is the euro dollar, right? The most uh, traded Forex pair. Now, we look at what happened, I guess, from from really from from last year, right? From 2021 over the whole year. Now, from really from from January 2021 to really this year, we had some negative growth, right, in in Europe, and you know we did get a little bit of growth, but then we kind of came back to 0.3 percent. Yeah, so you can see um, we had some negative growth. Two quarters of uh, of negative growth is deemed as a recession, right? So Europe were in a recession, yeah, um, technically, and then came out of it, but then had some pretty much. Uh, um, I guess, uh, uh, limited growth, very weak growth, economic growth, right? When you compare that, compare that to the dollar, the US dollar, you saw the US dollar around January, February, March, April, and all these quarters, right? We had growth, 4.5%, 6.3%, 6.7%, 2.3%, 6.9% was the most recent, um, the most recent uh, uh, reading, right, percentage. So you can see, yeah, the difference between the two, yeah? So obviously the one you should have been looking to buy, yeah, is the dollar and you're looking to sell the euro, yeah? That is the difference, that there's differentials and divergences. And sometimes you might not, you might not necessarily get a divergence where, they, where, where they're moving in different directions, but if you can see the differentials, that is also what will help you to make or one of the steps to make you understand what the central bank is likely to do with interest rates because that is what is most important what is the central bank likely to do with the valuation of the currency are they looking to high rates which means appreciating the currency or are they looking to cut rates which is going to be to depreciate and devalue the currency yeah so this is one of the steps now the second step, and step number three, I guess, is inflation. And this is where a lot of uh, traders tend to have um, uh, maybe uh, a bit of trouble um, understanding the impact of inflation on, um, on, on what the central bank is going to do um, and how it factors in. All right, so let me just. Uh, I know Richard and Patricia is new. You're right to the new to the new uh, to the new um, uh, uh, attendees who have just joined. Uh, just a quick, um, I guess, uh, housekeeping. Just make sure that your mics are off and that your videos are off as well. And um, and yeah, I'm going to have a Q and A pretty much at the end of the webinar. And welcome, by the way. 
So the inflation divergence differentials, right? So inflation is the currency's purchasing power, yeah? And actually rising inflation, yeah, equals currency depreciation and devaluation, yeah? Now, many people think that inflation means an increase in value. No, in fact, it's the absolute opposite. Yeah, and I think that they've uh, deliberately labelled, and I say they, but the uh, you know the, the 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 smart money, I guess, have deliberately labelled um, and mislabeled the uh, uh, what inflation really is, um, in a sense that you know to confuse the general public. Uh, just my conspiracy theory, but inflation is actually a devaluation of the currency. So can you guys see? my pen tool i'm just writing something can you see that can you see that guys can you just just type a yes yep yep, yep. brilliant excellent right so inflation right so inflation inf right in fact means devaluation devalue yeah or depreciation stroke depreciation so for my writing I'm on I'm on a um, I'm on a uh, trackpad at the moment right so that's what inflation means it's the higher the the, the, the the higher that inflation goes right from you know from zero to one what's well, supposed to be a <laughs> a zero but let's say zero percent yeah these are all percentages one percent two percent three percent is the more devalued your currency is so your purchasing power is decreasing in value yeah and so falling inflation means that current the currency is a, is actually appreciating yeah so if the currency is going from for example 4 to 3 to 2 to 1 in fact it's actually appreciating yeah it's getting more expensive so there's there's some inverses here, yeah. So um, yeah, I know Lawrence. Don't worry, I've got that. I've got it. Thanks. Yeah. So so just understand that inflation means devaluation, depreciation. Yeah. So rising inflation means your currency is getting more and more devalued. Yeah. Now falling inflation, yeah, means that your currency is getting is appreciating. Yeah. So your currency is getting more expensive. And what can happen, yeah, is where you have deflation, right? So you've got deflation, DF, right? And that actually is appreciation, A-P-P-R-E-C-I-A-T-I-O. -I, -I, I hope my writing is okay. Hope you guys can read it, appreciation right so it's getting more expensive right so with that being said yeah rising inflation devalue deflation is actually appreciation so inflation yeah is influenced is influenced by who started their video by the way please turn your video off turn your video off turn your video off can the person who has started their video please turn it off? If I find out who it is, you're gonna get kicked if you don't turn it off. Right. Sorry guys, one second. Done. Right. Um, right. So, with that being said, just disturbing the flow of the webinar. Right. So, where was I? Inflation is influenced by other countries, right? So, central banks try to control inflation, yeah, f via interest rates. 
yeah? And inflation is influenced, so the, you know, rising and falling is inflation, is really influenced by uh, other countries' currency valuations, right? So for example, their GDP and their interest rate policy, as well as supply and demand, QE, commodity scarcity, supply chain and wage growth, etc. So think about it like this, if inflation is going higher, yeah, if inflation is going higher, yeah, what does the, what does the central bank have to do to interest rates? So if that's inflation and this is interest rates, yeah, and remember a hike in interest rates does what? It appreciates the currency. Yeah, so appreciate. I can't be asked to write it all out. Yeah. But if this is, for example, zero, that's one, that's two, that's three, yeah, and that's four, yeah. If inflation is going higher, meaning it's being devalued, to counter that devaluation, yep, as uh, Asabi has, uh, has, 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 has said in the uh, private, and as well as uh, Artraf, yeah, exactly, they have to look to do what? They have to high crates, exactly. Yeah? So the higher inflation goes or devalues, they have to then start to appreciate the currency by hiking interest rates from one to two to three to four. Yeah, That's what they have to do. That's what they have to do. So the more inflation goes higher is the more you have to hike rates. Yeah, that is how they counter inflation. That is exactly how they counter inflation. And it's the same thing when you have deflation. So appreciation, yeah, they have to actually end up cutting rates to devalue the currency. Everyone following? Everyone following so far? Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Everyone following, brilliant. Fantastic. So that's what you need to understand when it comes to, because at the moment, we're in an environment where, you know, we're suffering with high inflation, right? I think, I think what was it? The last reading was 7.5% in the US, something like that. It's crazy. So as you guys know, what are the, what is the Federal Reserve looking to do with <laughs> with interest rates everyone knows this right they're looking to hike interest rates it's no mystery the higher inflation goes it forces or it's one of the factors that forces um the central bank to have to appreciate the currency because at the moment you know the us if you're living in the us your your, your currency is being devalued you know at the moment by 7.5% yeah so these again are the this is the rules to the game guys this is not you know some you know leon making it up or whatever it is this is what the banks look at they look at gdp and they look at inflation right so here in fact let me give you a bit of a a, a question yeah because many people do get this uh, get this wrong in their understanding so a chocolate bar or whatever yeah, but a chocolate bar cost one pound last year. The chocolate bar in 2022 has gone up by 10 pence. So it now costs one pound 10 pence. Has the value of the currency appreciated in value, increased in value, or has it depreciated? Has it devalued? Q says devalued. N says decreased depreciated devalued decreased devalued hmm excellent anybody think anybody think it should it the currency has actually appreciated in value everyone says pretty much devalued brilliant guys brilliant excellent so you're not understanding this excellent welcome ken um, so yeah, brilliant. And the reason why is because it takes more of that currency, yeah, to buy a chocolate bar. Yeah, if it only cost you one pound, but now it cost you one pound ten, it ta it's taking more of those pounds to buy the same chocolate bar. 
So in fact, your currency is being devalued. That's exactly it. Yeah. And you get you can get into things like, you know, hyperinflation. Yeah. Lax says only understanding because you're explaining it so well. Did not before. Oh, brilliant, Lax. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Brilliant. Excellent. So this is what inflation is. Yeah. This is what inflation means. Devalue, depreciation. Yeah. And on the other end, just to go over it quickly. If this is interest rate hikes. Yeah. These, these are hikes because you're increasing. You're going from one to two, two to three, three to four. On this end, you've got negative interest rates, which we've just pretty much come out of, right? In certain countries, certain countries still have it. So minus one, minus two, minus three, for example. Yeah, and what that is, yeah, and uh, deflation would be, for example, minus one, minus two, minus three. Yeah, and remember, deflation is currency appreciation so as the currency gets more expensive and appreciates remember cuts if this is an appreciation cuts mean devalue or a depreciation right right it's a depreciation so if inflation is getting is appreciating the central bank then has to go into negative interest rates if they don't have any more interest rates to cut because they might go from two to one from one to zero yeah but if inflation or you know inflation goes to deflation for example yes yeah, to keep it keeps appreciating then what happens is the same thing they're gonna have to keep cutting in order to try to bring the, the uh, I guess deflation back to and really the central bank's um, target right inflation rate every year is actually two percent yeah so when inflation is at two percent central banks will hold rates generally yeah that's they are mandated yeah and I'll get into that in the next slide two percent inflation is what central banks are mandated to try to get inflation to um, why um, they see that as um, they see that as the um, as acceptable it's almost like the Goldilocks economy where you know in in, in in our current form and what we have they think that two percent is really not too hot not too cold right when it comes to currency um, appreciation and, and, and depreciation um, but just understand that they that, that they are they are mandated generally to two percent. Some central banks are around maybe two point five percent. I've seen even three percent. But the ones that are generally in the currencies that we trade, um, you know, maybe the G ten, including you know the New Zealand dollar, um, it's usually around about two percent to maybe two point five percent is what their mandate is. Yeah, that's what it is. So whenever you have an appreciating currency and deflation. Generally, central banks will cut rates. Yeah. And when you have inflation that is going higher, meaning devalue, central banks will try to appreciate. So it's always, they're always trying to counter. Yeah. They're always trying to counter the devaluation of, you know, of their currency or the appreciation of their currency. Um, can it be two percent in in different inside? Yeah, it can be. It can be. Not every country because China is a different, a, to, a, a whole different story, right? They, uh, the People's Bank of China, they pretty much set their rates, right? Um, I don't think they have a free. They, they don't have a free floating currency, but um, that's getting into something else. As long as you guys understand this, yeah. As long as you guys understand this, this is what is going to generate you trade ideas forever, right? Forever. And a day, as long as we have currency, as long as we have central banks, as long as we have the current system, this is how it is done. This is how it is done. And I've got some of the guys in the room uh, from my uh, from my uh, private Discord group, and they will tell you. You know, if you ever speak to them, I've been doing this a long time, and uh, yeah, it's pretty much uh, that's what we do week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out. Yeah, generate these ideas. Um, right, so as long as you have growing inflation, 
I'm sorry, growing inflation, but you also have GDP growing at the same time. Yeah, you've got to have both. If GDP is growing, inflation is above that 2% target. Yeah, then central banks will typically hike rates. That's exactly what they're going to typically do. And once you understand that, you can get ahead of the central banks and start to position yourselves to either go long or short because you're going to find one current uh, central bank that is looking to potentially high rates and another one that is going to either look into cut rates or just keep rates as they are. Yeah. So there are a few divergences that we can look towards. Yeah. So you're, you're, you 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 want to buy the currency that is hiking rates versus one that is holding rates and preferably one that is cutting rates because. There's a gap there, there's a differential there between a hike and a hold and an even bigger gap between a hike and a cut, yeah? And that's when when, when you see, you know, hiking, holding, cutting, yeah? When you see, when you can see central banks that are really diverging in their monetary policy, yeah? That's where you get those trending markets either to the downside or to the upside. Yeah, depending on which is the base or the quote currency. So again, we're going to do a bit of a learning check for everyone. One sec, I'll uh, clear all the drawings. You're right, Dan. Just mute your mic, or I'll mute it for you. Thanks, Dan. Welcome, by the way. So again, the rules to the game. Here are the rules to the game. The central bank has an inflation target of two percent, right? So they're mandated. Yeah, they're mandated. That's the line in the sand. That's that's. This is the target, I guess. Yeah, so two percent target. By the way, if you don't believe me on any of this, you can always Google it, right? Or the Google is your friend, right? So that's the target, two percent. Now, if inflation is above the two percent target, yeah, and trending away from their two percent target, you will have you know, a rate rise, a rate hike, yeah? And if you have inflation that is above the 2% target but trending towards their target, they generally will hold rates. Central banks, yeah, they don't like to really mess with interest rates. They don't like it because it can have, and hiking, hold, um, and cutting rates can, can have positive effects on the economy but it can also have negative effects if you get if they get it wrong if they hike too much or if they cut too much yeah because of borrowing and lending spending etc yeah so you know I, I, I give an example imagine if interest rates yeah were like at 10 percent right now how would that affect your business how would that affect you know borrowing and lending if you know, uh, in, in interest rates were at 10, 15% right now. Kill you, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? It would be like, it would be too much, right? Exactly. It's bad. That's exactly it, Q. Bad for GDP, right? So it's not that they, they don't want to, they, they don't like to, 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 to hike or cut. In fact, they would prefer to hold, yeah? They would, they would prefer to hold. And they, they, they really, they really kind of hike or cut rates you know, when they, they are really kind of forced to, yeah, they will, they, they're really forced to. So just as a rule of thumb, central banks would try to hold rates for, you know, for as long as they can, yeah, until they're really kind of forced to. Again, look at what's happening with the US and the Federal Reserve, right? Pretty much they keep increasing their, uh, their projected uh, hikes, yeah, for the US dollar. Before it was like, I remember when it was, they were going to maybe do it three times, then it's turned to four times, then it's turned to five times, and now it's turned to, well, instead of hiking, you know, 25 basis points or, you know, 0.25%, now they've got to hike 0.5%, you know what I mean? Because they're increasing, they're constantly increasing it because inflation, and we'll see it in a minute, is constantly kept rising. Yeah? Uh, Asabi says, uh, hi, highly on the third bullet point, please can you read and explain it? Yeah, I'm going to get to that in a sec. Yeah, I'm going to get to that in a sec. So, so if inflation, yeah, is above the 2% target and trending towards the 2% target, yeah, they're not going to want to cut rates, are they? 
They're just going to leave inflation to do what it does because it's coming back to their 2% target. Yeah, does that make sense, Asabi? I think that's the third point, or is that, or is one, two, three? Or do you want? Or are we talking about if inflation is below the two percent target? Right. Okay. Brilliant. So now, if inflation is below the two percent target, so inflation is somewhere around here, like you know one percent, yeah, and trending away from their two percent target, yeah. Remember, inflation going lower, yeah, from one to zero to minus one percent to minus two percent means that the the currency is actually appreciating, right? Right, so this is this is appreciate and this is depreciate or devalue. Yeah. That's how to look at it. Above that line, devalue, well actually that even 2% is really being devalued, but it's acceptable devalue. But anything below 2%, they look at it as appreciate. The currency is appreciating, getting more expensive. So if the currency is already, you know, inflation is already below the 2% and trending away, it's appreciating and they're, they're not reaching their 2% target, which means that they have to cut rates and cutting rates means they have to devalue the currency. Yeah, they have to counter the appreciation by devaluing the currency to bring it back to the 2% target. Yeah. But if inflation is below the 2% target, but automatically trending towards that without actually having to do anything, then they will hold rates. There's no need for them to hike rates when prices are below it, right? And they don't want to cut rates because inflation is already trending towards it. And like I said before, central banks don't want to you know, tinker with in, in, um, interest rates, with their own interest rates, because it can hurt the economy. So they'd rather let it naturally get to where they want it to get to yeah so these are the rules to the game and if you understand this this is evergreen yeah forget looking at forex factory and trying to trade you know any kind of retail sales or anything like that all roads lead to this retail sales employment unemployment it all leads back to gdp and inflation and therefore, interest rates. Yeah. Is everybody uh, everybody following? Everyone follow that, yeah? Uh, Thato says, Leon, can inflation of a country, oh, you just went off, a uh, country be affected by, by the global economy? Yes, it can. It can. For example, you know, you've got supply chain problems, right? You've got scarcity. Um and, and, and the like, you've got commodity prices that, that do um, affect um, inflation. Yeah, but it's not, it's not right now, I'm trying to keep things as simple as possible. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to get things, keep, definitely keep things as simple as possible. But the answer is, is yes. Yeah, inflation of a country can be affected uh, by the global economy, depending on where they're located and who their trade partners are. Yeah, I give I give I just give a quick example of that. For example, Australia, right? So China are the um, the uh, world's economic engine, right? If China, the, the the saying is is if China sneezes, then the whole world catches a cold. If China go into a recession, it will generally affect you know the globe because of globalization, right? So the first the the, the countries that are going to be really affected by that by a China slowdown. Yeah, is going to be um, Australia and New Zealand. Typically, Australia because they, um, you know, that that's their biggest trade partner, right? Iron ore, that's exactly it. Um, Artref, right? Iron ore, uh, copper, for example, gold, etc. So basically, China will be buying less of those commodities, yeah, because they're going into a recession, right? They can't afford to. The infrastructure projects are, 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 are have come to a halt. They're not spending as much, yeah. So if Australia then are selling less to um, uh, uh, China, then that's going to affect not only their GDP, but it, it can affect inflation because commodity prices are um, are included, I guess, in with with inflation readings. Yeah, so it can affect it either directly or indirectly, also depending on where you are in the world. Yeah. 
So yep, yeah, that is that. So let's move on and I'm glad everybody is following. Brilliant, excellent, excellent, excellent. Right, so here we go. Here we are with inflation divergence, I guess, differentials, right? And again, euro dollar, yeah. So let's go into the euro dollar. So you can see, hopefully, you guys can see the uh, one second. Let me just change the color of this pen tool to I'll do it red. Excellent, right? So this was last year, right? So for the whole of 2021, beginning of 2022, yeah. Now, Remember I said that the, the 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 mandate for the central bank is 2%. 2%, 2%, yeah? When prices are above 2%, yeah, and trending away from that, then it, it's one of the things that can force a central bank to want to hike rates. Of course, we must remember GDP. GDP must support a rate hike. So you have to have GDP growing at the same time, yeah? So in the sorry in the uh, in 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 the US around April you had inflation at 4.2%. Crazy. Pretty much double their mandate, right? Whereas in April, yeah, of 2021, sorry. I said 2022, didn't I? Yeah, so April of 2021, yeah, is 4.2% in the US. Europe was 1.6 in April. So, again, what do you think? Who was under more pressure to high crates? Which country was under pressure? Ah, here we go. You're a, you're a clever lot. Yep, you're getting it. Yep, yep, yeah, exactly. The US, right? The US were more under pressure in order to high crates than Europe. Europe were pretty much looking to hold rates. So... Understanding that, yeah, the path of least resistance, if you actually look, and it, the same thing, you know, continued on, right? So the same thing continued on for for, for generally, you know, July, August, and even though price uh, inflation did go higher in Europe and it's going higher pretty much everywhere in, in, the, in the world, look at the numbers, right? Look at the numbers. You've got five you know, 4.95, 5.1, whereas you've got 7%. So, so so, which currency is being devalued more? Is it Europe or is it the US? Who's suffering with the most devaluation of their currency? That's exactly it. So which central bank is, is likely, as we know, the central bank that is likely to act first when it comes to hiking rates? Exactly, the Fed are more aggressive. Simple. Yeah, the Fed are more aggressive. Yeah, that is it. So with that being said, so with that being said, over the year, right, we can look back over the year and we can see where the path of least resistance was. So again, just quickly, do you think if we're looking at the, the, the year, right, we're looking at the whole year, right, of the euro dollar without looking at the chart, no cheating, yeah, right, do you think the euro dollar went up or do you think the euro dollar went down over the year? Leah says down. Oh, Q says up. Euro dollar, right? So euro dollar pair. Yeah. Euro dollar, just make sure. Yeah. If we're looking at the euro dollar over one year, because we can see one year's worth of data here and here, where do you think the euro dollar went? The euro dollar, by the way. I'm seeing up, I'm seeing down. Well, why would you buy the euro over the dollar if we just established that the Fed are more aggressive in hiking rates? What is hiking rates? Hiking rates is appreciating, right? Appreciating the currency. Right, there we are. For those of you who were saying up, I don't think you've uh, you've understood. You've understood, man. <laughs> exactly down Q. That's exactly it. You're buying the dollar, right? You're buying the quote currency, meaning that if you want to buy the quote currency, yeah, then you really on, on your broker you're pressing short, right? If you're buying the base currency, it means that you're buying, you know, you're, you're thinking that prices are going to go higher, right? So in order for you to buy the euro US dollar, meaning that you think the dollar is going to appreciate, right? The euro dollar went down over the year yeah and this is provable by 
The next slide. This is what happened over the year. Yeah. Combining inflation and GDP cycle divergence differentials. Yeah. This is what happened over the year. Prices fell from probably around a thousand pips over the course of over a thousand pips over the course of the year yep the path of least resistance was to the downside yet we had a moment where prices went up but overall the trend was to the downside yep predictable predictable and uh many of the guys many of the guys you know um you know in in the group We'll attest to this, we were going short on the euro dollar last year. No, no longs. No longs. I didn't I didn't take one long euro dollar <laughs> euro dollar trade. Mercedes, 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 welcome, but keep your mic muted, please. <laughs> um so so that is pretty much what happened. Yeah? Light bulb moment. How many of you are getting that light bulb moment? Yeah, we'll do it again, right? We'll do it again. We'll do it on another pair, yeah? Again, last year. So, combining inflation and GDP cycle divergence differentials, and we do it on the dollar yen. <laughs> the sun is in your eyes. <laughs> it's still a bit confusing. Ah, well, what? I can't really ask, un 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 unfortunately. Is it, is it, Mr. Sean, um, why, why is it confusing? What is it? Because I did ask if everyone was following along, and everyone was saying, yep, 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 yep. And then all of a sudden now, there's a bit of confusion. What is it What is it that's confusing? That's confusing you. If it's easy for you to, to, to speak, then uh, turn your mic on. The PEM, Mr. Sean, I, I can't pronounce your, um, your, 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 uh, your first name. I don't want to butcher your name. Is it? Ammo... Gelang, Amo Gelang, Sean. All right, let me go back. Just, just for, just for anyone else, anyone who's confused, yeah. Just for anyone who's confused. So, inflation, remember, is devaluation. Right. So this is inflation is devaluation. Yeah, devaluation. Interest rates combat devaluation or try to combat devaluation yeah because by hiking rates you are appreciating and you're creating demand for the currency yeah so i o n right so a hike in rates or a rise in rates so if something is becoming more devalued the only way to get it back to the 2% target is to try to appreciate it. That's it. So the central bank is likely to hike rates. And if they're hiking rates causing an appreciation, then you should be buying the dollar because the euro are not looking to hike rates anytime soon because they were lagging behind. Yep, it's clear. Uh, the rising inflation in the US meant devalued currency. That's why it was confusing. The rising inflation in the US meant a devalued currency. Yes, and that's and that's exactly why uh, Asabi. I I I truly believe that they deliberately called inflation. Inflation should actually be called deflation, and deflation should be called inflation, because. Inflation, you think, is an increase in value, and de deflation would be a decrease <laughs> in value, right? But they did it the other, the, the opposite way round, and I do honestly think to confuse to confuse people. Um, if inflation for the U.S. is still going, if sorry, one second. So, Mr. Sean said, if inflation for the U.S. is still going down, wouldn't it mean that the U.S. is weak? Okay, so. You're, you're, you're just let's let's focus on what I'm saying right now because nobody's talking about um, inflation going down, right? I'm giving you an example of inflation rising. Yeah, so understand what I'm saying right now. Don't let your mind wander anywhere else. 
you need to focus on what's going on right now, right in front of you. Yeah. So if you don't understand this, then how can you ask a totally other opposite question? You have to just focus on what's going on now. You understand inflation is devaluation. And in order to combat devaluation, to stop the devaluation of your currency, you need to try to appreciate it. And the only way the central banks can try to appreciate it, to combat the devaluation, to counter that, is to hike. So the more devalued it gets, is the more they're going to hike. Yeah. I have a quick question. Right. Uh, yeah. Right. Um, uh, okay. All right. I'll, 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 allow you, I'll allow you to speak and then I'm going to move on. Yeah. All right. Let's go. All right. So uh, did the Fed uh, increase the, uh, the rates? Like did they hike or just because of the probability that they're going to hike uh, make people trade against uh, 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 euro? They don't know. They don't care about that. They care about their economy and they care about inflation. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not about whether it's against the euro and it's against it. Not nah, like they got issues. They, they they couldn't care less. They're trying to manage their economy. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So just yes. literally, don't bring in anything else. I'm just giving you the keys. I'm giving you the rules to the game. Just look at the data. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. They got, they got inflation problems. They're mandated to bring inflation to 2%. They're mandated. Mandate means that they have to do it. They have to, have to, have to do it somehow. Yeah? Central banks are mandated to do it. So, if they're mandated, meaning I mean it's a must, then they're not concerned about what's going on in Europe. They just want to get to that target. Yeah? So, they have to appreciate it. But anyways, we spent a while on this. I want to get to... Uh, the US dollar. I'm hoping that everybody uh, is clear on that. If not, unfortunately, I don't know. I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Um, so, um, okay, brilliant, brilliant. You guys are getting it right. By the way, guys, I know you guys are commenting in here, but I can't, I, just to get through this, um, to get through the presentation, I kind of have to maybe focus more on the presentation. And then we're nearly there, by the way, a few more slides, and then we can ask all the questions you want. So another maybe 10, 15 minutes, right? So let's look at another example of what happened last year. So you've got US inflation, yeah? As we know, is at around 7%, right? Or it was it was rising, yeah? So it went from 1.4 to 1.7 to 2.6 to 4.2, and it was really, you know, going higher, right? Above their 2% target. Now let's look at the yen, yeah? The yen had negative inflation, right? Minus inflation. For pretty much January 2021 and they've just now kind of come positive and that positive is basically 0.8 percent yeah so then you've got what a check in the check column which one do you want to probably look to buy you would look to buy the US dollar right you're definitely not looking to buy you know because the, 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 the central bank the Bank of Japan yeah is not going to do anything with with with, with, with interest rates they're doing absolutely nothing with interest rates because they don't have to. Yeah, they shouldn't. As we said, if this is their 2% target, yeah, and inflation is below their 2% target, which is what which it was, it was like in the negative. So this is like negative whatever it is. Yeah. And prices are trending towards their 2% target. They hold. And that's basically what they were doing. They were just, they just literally held rates. Whereas the Federal Reserve are looking to hike rates. Look at the economy. And then let me zoom in, I guess, a bit, because I know it's a bit small. Yeah, so let's look at, yeah. So we're looking at US GDP. Again, we know that for, for, for sure, 4.5, 6.3, 6.7, 2.3. So we had, you know, nice, healthy economy. Let's compare that to, you know, Japan, negative tepid growth negative right with the last you know couple of readings so they weren't doing too great so again when we understand the divergences and the differentials between the two economies yeah what is the central bank likely to do with interest rates for the US it's likely to obviously we know that for a fact is high rates 
Japan, hold rates, right? High rates, hold rates. So we're just gathering evidence, yeah? So there's a, there's a differential, there's a divergence there, right? Remember I saying it's about divergences, you've got divergence at hike, hold or cut. The best trade is basically, you know, hikes versus cuts, but there's still a divergence between hikes and holds, yeah? So understanding this, yeah, what do you think, in what direction do you think the dollar yen went last year, higher or lower on a price chart? Up, up, higher, long, everybody getting it right. That's exactly it. Brilliant. Higher. Yep. 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 Brilliant. Brilliant. Brilliant, guys. Excellent. And if you look at this, remember this is a this is a year's data. This is all a year's data. Yeah. Fundamentally, this is what happened. Yeah. Over the year, it went from pretty much one oh two fifty all the way up to 115s. So that's literally around about, you know, maybe 1300 pips. Yeah, so that is it. Yeah, so combining those cycles, right, and the differentials and the divergences. Yeah, so, just to round off now, because I've been doing this for an hour and I wanted to keep this year around about an hour and a half or so, hour 45. So combine inflation and GDP cycle divergences and differentials with leading and lagging, lagging monetary policies. A leading and lagging, lagging monetary policy, yeah? Now, one of the things you must look also look towards divergences as well as leading and lagging, lagging policy. I don't know why I can't, can't say uh, lagging properly. Anyways. So with leading and lagging yeah, monetary policy, let me just explain this. So this is from ING Bank. ING Bank do central bank, you know, they're, they're, they're forecasting what the central bank possibly may do, yeah, by looking at GDP and inflation, as well as some other things as well, but generally all roads lead back to these two, yeah? Now, one of the things you want to do is you want to look to see who is looking to hike first, yeah? So who is hiking first, right? So who's first to hike, who's second to hike, who's first, who's third, last, and, and, and compared to who's last to hike. So who's hiking first compared to who's last? Oh, that's right, that's meant to be a T. Sorry about that. Yeah, and you want to buy the currency or I, I generally buy the currency who is hiking first because what is hiking? Hiking is appreciating versus the currency that is not looking to hike at all. So, or, and secondly as well, right? Secondly, who is hiking more? Yeah, and who is hiking less? Because the more hikes means that they're, 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 they're looking to appreciate their currency more, the less hikes that they, they're projected to do in the year means that they're not looking to hike as much. They're not looking to appreciate their currency as much. Yeah, so you wanna do the, you wanna, you wanna take into account who's first, who's second, who's third, compared to who's lost, there's a divergence, and then who's hiking more compared to who is hiking less. And this situation and this, I guess this, uh, this graph is basically just showing you, for example, for 2022, right? 2022 in the quarters right here, what they expect the central banks to do. So again, Federal Reserve looking to hike once, twice, three times, four times, five times this year compared to what Europe, who generally, I think now this has kind of changed. I think the expectation with Christine Lagarde when she came out, was it last week or the week before? Pretty much indicating that they may want to hike rates in the fourth quarter, right? So that actually should have a bit of an arrow there, potentially, whether they will, whether they won't, who knows? But, you know, pretty much, the Federal Reserve should be hiking more than the European Central Bank. The Bank of England, as we know, have been hiking rates, but less so than the Federal Reserve. Bank of Japan, sure, not looking to do anything. Bank of Canada are looking to hike quite a lot. Yeah, Reserve Bank of Australia are starting their first hikes, I guess, in the second quarter yeah, of this year. 
again Swiss National Bank probably fourth quarter of 2023 so again you can pretty much see who is hiking and how much they're hiking and you generally again you generally over the medium to long term want to look towards buying the currencies that are looking to appreciate their currencies than the ones that aren't yeah so leading and lagging is 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 really important uh one second so and again we can just look at various this is just a, a basically a map uh, from bloomberg right showing you central banks take hawkish stance and more than a dozen have already hiked rates in 2022 with more to come and it just shows you from i guess a, a global perspective who is hiking who is who has held rates and who is cutting right so you can start to look and see which countries you should be buying you know and which countries you should be selling of course i'm not looking to buy anything that's not you know one of the major or exotic pairs and exotic i mean you know um you know pairs like for example euro new zealand i'm still only looking to trade you know the swiss franc japanese yen you know canadian dollar australian dollar new zealand dollar pound yen uh and uh, euro right and the dollar those are really the currencies that i'm looking to looking to trade right and i'm looking at differentials and divergences between those right so ultimately we need to think like the central bank yeah what are they likely to do with interest rates right appreciate or depreciate the currency when looking at gdp and inflation data what are they likely to do yeah and in with, with fundamental analysis what we're doing as fundamental analysis protagonists we're looking to buy the rumor and sell the fact so again we think like investment banks and funds because the investment banks and funds take their cues from what the central bank is going to do and they're the they're you know what is what is i guess what is called the market whenever people say refer to you know what the market thinks it's the investment banks the hedge funds the sovereign wealth funds the family offices etc right those are the buyers and sellers of the currency and those create the demand or the supply etc right but they're taking their cues from what central banks do yeah so in order for you to again want to buy or sell the currency yeah and buy the rumor i guess is what i meant to say right the data must support the the, the rumor or the narrative it's really important that you understand this because yes we can understand that let's say for example let's say for example gdp yeah is on the rise oh brilliant leon said gdp is on the rise excellent i want to be buying first of all you really want gdp and inflation yeah to be on the rise but let's say for example we have inflation and let's say for example inflation is at i don't know two percent yeah gdp is on the rise now if inflation yeah it doesn't mean that they're going to hike rates but let's say for example the, the inflation starts to look like it's going higher yeah maybe 2.1 percent and there's rumors that they may want to hike rates yeah because maybe inflation is going maybe slightly slightly beyond their two percent target and i, I wouldn't even say 2.1 i would probably say maybe something like maybe three percent yeah three percent central banks start to maybe wanting to try to talk it down or whatever it is yeah let's say for example it's a three percent now if the next reading let's say for example is maybe 2.8 percent yeah it doesn't support the narrative that they're going to high rates because they think you know that obviously there's a two percent target that they're mandated to, to achieve and this may be the start of prices or inflation coming back down towards that two percent target yeah so the data has to support the narrative yeah you can't just start buying willy-nilly or selling willy-nilly you know what i mean you have to you know there has to be legs to the rumor there has to be supporting evidence yeah to the rumor yeah so make sure that that you know you keep your finger on the pulse trust bank forecasts right trust the banks i know people don't trust the banks and there's times where you know you've got to be kind of anti-establishment in certain respects and uh and, and i'm not one to necessarily trust the establishment but when it comes to bank forecasts 
I trust them and the reason why is because I'm not saying that they're going to be right all the time or wrong but just to kind of illustrate a point is that banks are not in the business of misleading their clientele yeah they're not in the you know they're paid you know clientele and they're and they're, and and, and uh, the people that they're managing money for right they're not in the business of doing that they need to have credibility yeah so when they produce their bank forecasts they don't know who's reading it right it could be a massive you know investor right who subscribes to bloomberg or the financial times and you know they've got an analyst you know who's quoted as saying you know we think that the euro dollar is going to go down for example right it's going to continue to devalue yeah now they could basically make decisions you know their clientele or a potential client could make decisions based off of what they're saying right so they don't they're not trying to be wrong because if they're wrong more often than they're right yeah then they're going to lose all credibility and they're going to get money so trust bank forecasts yeah i'm not saying that you know the forecast today yeah because again as i as, I, as i'm going to remind you and repeatedly remind you this is medium to long term trading yeah this is medium to long term trading in the short term for this week who knows what price is going to do? Mark is going to show you basically how to how the market makers work in the short term and how to really kind of trade short term, yeah, as well as you know medium to long term as well. But from the perspective of you know trying to predict where price is going to go in the short term, yeah, is really a bit of a fool's game if you don't understand the market makers model. Right, I can tell you that now. And I've traded, <laughs> I've, I've probably bought a whole load of courses. I've probably spent, what, I spent maybe 15, maybe, maybe 20 grand on in, indicators in the past, right, when I was learning. And uh, I can tell you some. I can tell you, tell you now, right, God is my witness, right, it is just, you know, it, it, it's technical analysis. If you don't know, you know, um, I guess order flow, market maker stuff, you're just gonna be lost in the wilderness. Anyways, trust the banks. Combine fundamental divergence trade ideas with higher time frame zones. So look at we always look at it from a macro perspective, yeah, from from the bigger picture. So the best zones, whatever technical strategy you're trading, yeah, look at it from the higher time frame perspective. Whether you're trading supply and demand, whether you're trading support and resistance, daily zones, daily levels are really where you want to have that perspective. Yeah, um, five minute levels, you know, one minute zones, you know, these one hour zones and, and levels are just not going to um, uh, cut it. You really need, you really, really, really need to look at it from a bigger perspective. And that's not to say that you shouldn't trade the lower time frames, of course. But let's say what what ultimately what you want to do and and what we do at Trading One Eighty is is understand basically, you know, we're looking at looking at daily zones first of all. Right, that's a demand zone, for example. Prices might come up, so we do our fundamental analysis. We understand that prices have been coming up, whatever it is. This is an area of value, and then from a daily perspective, and then we look to, or, or a weekly perspective, and then we go down into the lower time frames and look for our, you know, trade entries and trade setups, whether it's stop hunting, catch pain relief, or just daily supply and demand zone setups. Yeah, so you can go into the lower time frames. When you're looking for entries and you know micro levels, but overall, what you want to do is have that daily and and look for daily and weekly zones, whatever your technical strategy, you know, is currently. Um, the market marches to the drum of its own beat, not yours. So, what do I mean by that? I mean that the market works in its own time. Yeah, just because you're trying to pass a prop firm challenge or because you need to make money you know today this week or even this month yeah it doesn't you know the, the market doesn't care it doesn't care what you want to do and what your targets are yeah generally yeah the the, the market i don't want to get too much into it but the, how the how the, uh, the the banks and financial institutions have to do the business model between institutions and market makers yeah it takes time for them to fill their orders, right? So banks, institutions may take at least, you know, a week, a month, two, three months to fill their orders before prices may go higher, right? So again, I'm not really trying to get into the technicals around it, but just understand that that fundamentally we want to be buyers. There's, that, that might be maybe a week or two of trading. 
Yeah. Now, many people will say, well, Leon said to buy the, the you know, the, 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 the euro dollar or sell the euro dollar. And it's been going sideways for the past you know, week or two. That's again, that's not our concern. Eventually it will go higher or lower. But what has to happen in more more of the short term is more of the auction phase, yeah, the buying and selling, yeah, of 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 Euros. Liquidity has to be got, yeah. Iceberg orders, etc. has to be accumulated. And they banks don't have the luxury of being able to fill their orders just in one click, right? Like like retail traders. We just buy here and then that's it. Brilliant. But they have to accumulate. They have to, you know, be able to buy in, um, you know, over a period of time. So fundamentals, and as I say, medium to long term, you've seen the euro dollar, right? You saw the euro dollar go down. You saw um, the, the the dollar yen go up. Were there periods in that euro dollar downtrend where you might have had a week or two, or even a month or two, of prices rising? Of course you would have, yeah. But overall, the path of least resistance was to the, to the downside in the same way that, you know, the, the yen was 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 going sideways for maybe periods of time before going higher, maybe even went lower. But generally, the path of least resistance was to the upside. Yeah. So in the short term, it's really about understanding, um, you know, value and the market marching really to the beat of its own drum, not yours. You can't put a time frame on when these things are going to happen. But trust me. They will, right? They will. So other fundamental trade ideas do include convergence and risk sentiment. I'm not going to get into that in this one, maybe in another webinar, maybe not. It depends. But the guys definitely who are in the group will know about convergence and risk sentiment ideas. We just really kind of focused on uh, divergence ideas. And also as well, finally, just quickly as well, don't get married to forex pairs really and truly your forex pairs that you trade should be dictated to you by um the fundamental analysis and looking for that trade idea right looking for the divergences or the differentials in monetary policy whether you know a central bank is hiking rates another one is cutting rates or whether you know you've got um, leading and lagging monetary policy. That's where you're looking to trade. That's the, because that's where you know, hopefully, where prices should go, either to the upside or to the downside. If you're trading two currencies where the central banks are looking to hold rates, then who knows where prices may go? I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? In the medium to long term. Nobody knows because, it's again, it's a straight fight. It's like betting on, you know, a boxing match where you've got two even evenly matched fighters it's harder to make money on that bet than it would be to bet on a fighter who is in tip-top shape versus someone who hasn't been training and is maybe in his bloody 40s you know what I mean there's there's easy bets out there it doesn't happen every day or even every single week yeah it can there's times where we get loads of trade ideas everything kind of aligns and we, we we have so many trades we don't know which ones to take and there are some days where, and maybe some weeks where, you know, there's, there are slim pickings. We can't, you know, trade based off of what our time frame is. The market, you know, is is a, is a is a relationship between the institutions and the market makers. Yeah, it's their business model. It's not ours. Yeah, so we have to pick and choose when we trade and when we don't. And as I said, there's some trades. There's some weeks where you might have. 10 trades there's some weeks where you might have one trade who knows yeah so don't but don't get married to forex pairs if the fundamentals are not clear right on your favorite pair i hate that saying oh my favorite pair is that's nonsense because your favorite pair is dictated to by fundamental analysis right and if it's not clear don't trade it there's nothing wrong with not trading you know the the, the gu there's nothing wrong with not trading the EU, if, it's, if 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 it was once trending, yeah, or once the fundamentals were clear, yeah, and then all of a sudden now, say all of a sudden, but generally it's, there, there, there becomes less of a divergence, it doesn't become as clear, just don't trade it, right? Look for where there are divergences. And there, there are always divergences. There are always divergences from risk sentiment divergences. I've obviously just shown you one, you know, and, and there are convergences. It's always trade ideas that you can, but from a from a divergence perspective, this is, you know, where we are, right? So those are really my uh, my top tips, yeah. And that brings me really 
to to the end of the webinar and Mark's you know just so told you about tomorrow just as a reminder day two footprints of the market wells and how to trade alongside them tomorrow Thursday 17th of February 8 p.m. London time and I was gonna say email Mark but you've, you've already got the links so don't worry about that um, and pretty much just a Q&A now um, there is something I do want to go over just quickly as well I forgot I put this in the slide matter of fact just quickly because I do get this question a lot and the question is is should I always buy the currency with the highest interest rate and the answer really is no um, because the highest interest rate doesn't always dictate um, you know the way you should be buying so I'll give an example right so let's say for example you've got an, uh, a, a currency that has 5% in, in interest rate right and you have one that is uh, at 1% this central bank is looking to hold rates yeah but this central bank is looking to hike rates which one should you buy which one should you buy which bank should you buy bank a or bank b b b b b oh someone said a <laughs> someone said a a few people said a now oh you should really be buying b right anyone who said b is correct because what's known yeah what's known about the valuation of the, the, this currency the central bank are not looking to do anything they're not, they're not looking to appreciate or or depreciate their currency right they're looking to hold rates they're comfortable with where it is whereas this currency or this central bank are looking to high rates from one to 1.5 maybe to 2 to 2.5 so these guys are actually appreciating their currency whereas these guys are not so by default you will have the valuation you will have if this is obviously you know this might be uh, the, I don't know the euro for example and that might be the dollar yeah so if you're buying euro dollar uh, EU yeah and this is what happens then you want to buy Europe you want to buy the one with the lowest inf um, interest rate because they're looking to high rates and they're looking to appreciate their currency whereas the one with the higher interest rate actually isn't they're looking to hold rates so there's a tip right there there's a massive tip right there a lot a lot of traders get that wrong in fact I'd probably say again 99% I haven't seen not one trader not like I'm looking online or anything like that but you know uh, they don't they don't tell you that yeah they don't tell you that i'll tell you that now it's uh it's true anyways and the second one before we get into the q a is and i'll do the q a for maybe another uh, maybe about maybe about 15 15 minutes or so right so can i apply fundamentals to the five minute chart yes of course you can but and i think i probably alluded to this uh earlier or actually i said it earlier is understand where you are on a price chart apply the higher time frames yeah you you must look at the higher time frame levels higher time frame zones yeah in order for you to um in order for you to uh uh to trade in the five minutes because what you're ultimately doing again like i said if you're coming up to if you're coming down to maybe a, a daily or a weekly demand zone then fine brilliant you can trade the five minute in there right zoom down into that zone but you have to look for higher time frame levels because those are the ones that are going to be traded the most. So, ah, uh, all right, that brings me to the end of the webinar. I'll do a quick 15 minutes and I've got a few questions. I will start with Lloyd. Lloyd says, can you please show us how you prepare fundamental analysis spreadsheet? I will say that not in this webinar, <laughs> not in this webinar. But the fundamental analysis spreadsheet is really for the guys in the in the group and uh, I think I might be doing them a bit of a disservice if I do you know what I mean it's a bit of a trade secret so uh, unfortunately not um, how do we combine inflation and interest rates to GDP when they are contradictory how do we combine inflation and interest rates to GDP well First of all, you would you, you that's not the way to look at it because interest rates 
are dictated by GDP and inflation. Almost like you have to look at it like this, yeah? As I said, all roads at the beginning, I don't know if you was there at the beginning, right? To answer that question, but all roads lead to interest rates. So that's the most important, right? And then below that, you've got inflation and GDP. Uh, G D P. Yeah. So this is like the king. This is like where all roads will lead. This is the final destination. What the central bank would do with currencies, either appreciate or depreciate or devalue. Right. That's basically what what we're talking about. So depending on what happens here and here, inflation and G D P will determine what central banks do with interest rates, and that's all I'm concerned with. Right. If G D P is growing and inflation is above. 2% target and trending away from that 2% target as far as trending higher, then I know that the central bank is generally going to high rates, so I want to be buying that currency. That's it. Yeah, that is it. I'm not trying to remix this and trying to look at what's going on with GDP, looking at inflation and interest rates. That doesn't make any sense. Why would I want to do that? Um, da, 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 da. So, no worries, uh, uh, Chalky. Uh, can you please open membership? <laughs> no. Um, uh, yeah, Sabi, I'll, I'll think about it. <laughs> I'll think about it. Uh, Rewatch the video. Okay. Uh, what banks that do analysis, which we can some, which we can trust somehow? That's from no. So pretty much all the banks. All right. I'll give you. You know what you should. Um, if you go to one of the banks and one of the free websites and, uh, that I use pretty much religiously is ING. Yeah, are you? There's a, there are several. There was probably maybe around about 10, 11, 12 uh, banks in the group that we look towards uh, analysis wise. But I'll give you one of the free ones, and it's Think. T H I N K dot i n g dot com right lots of info there lots of info there great analysis um and uh you know that will definitely help you out with the forecasts what's going on in the economy um you know you can there's there's bloomberg you can you know i wouldn't say subscribe to that if if, if it's not in your budget you can if you want to if they do like a, I guess a, a, a maybe a, like a, a a three month you know trial subscription for maybe like you know ten pound or something like that, then um, then definitely worth it. If you find it worth it, ING, yeah, the ING Bank, right? ING Bank, they're a Dutch bank. Great analysis. Uh, I'm just scrolling back through the through the um, through the through the uh, questions. Uh, okay, please can we where can we get GDP inflation interest rates right? So that would be trading economics. So trading T R A D I N G E C O N O M I C S right to get all that data. Trading tradingeconomics.com is where I look towards for my data. Uh, do you take into consideration the amount of loans with fixed and variable interest? Nah, don't do that. There's no, re there's no reason to take into account um, loans and fixed. And as I said, I don't know if you was at the beginning, at the beginning, uh, Oringo one, um, eliminate the noise, right? There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of um, distractions yeah I'm um, this presentation literally tells you what to focus on <laughs> like I wouldn't say there's nothing else yeah there are some other things in here that you maybe you could but you don't need them this is what you need yeah this is all you need this is like you know uh, keys to the kingdom or th this will definitely give you a great trading idea there are as like i said other trading ideas of course there are but this is one of them that will that will definitely set you straight and if you can understand this then you should be all right difference between gdp year on year and quarter on quarter year on year is measured obviously every year quarter on quarter every quarter 
Uh, you want to look at probably more focus on quarter on quarter um, because that's where you will find out it's a shorter time frame first of all and also two two negative readings yeah two negative readings of of um, of quarter on quarter two quarters negative readings will equal a recession right recession I think e s s recession so it's better, it's, it's you know, if you're gonna, I mean, focus on, you can focus on both, but the most important reading is the quarter on quarter. Um, uh, news, yeah, so news that affects inflation and and interest. So news that affects inflation and it, there's lots of, there's lots of news. What I would say is, 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 is try to focus on things like uh, wage growth, um, and again, you can go into so much. There's there's many different areas to focus on. Focus more on things like just CPI, right? CPI data, yeah, um, is one of them. Wage growth is definitely um, another that the central bank generally tends to focus on. There are obviously other, you know, inflation data like, you know, commodity prices, you know, supply chain problems. But generally what you want to focus on is is mainly CPI. Yeah, mainly CPI and, and, and wage growth. Uh, just a practical question. You cannot attend tomorrow's webinar. Will it be recorded? Oh, that's up to Mark. That is up to Mark. Unfortunately, um, uh, I don't know. We might just want to make it exclusive. Sorry, Ian. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Asabi. Attend Mark's webinar and you'll see. Yeah. Attend Mark's webinar and you'll see us, Abby. Uh, flawless. With what we have learned from you today, can you look to sell the euro dollar in the near future? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a seller of the euro dollar. Yeah, and we've been sellers of the euro dollar um, pretty much uh, most of the year. I would say actually pretty much all year, probably from around about January. I think it was January, mid January, if I remember correctly. Um, I've been a seller of the uh, of of the euro dollar. Um, so yeah, I mean the divergence isn't there anymore as, as much as as much anymore, right? And the reason why is because the the the, the, um, the ECB, right? ECB. Christine Lagarde has come out and kind of given the markets a bit of a rumor that they may want to hike rates this year. Even though, even though the, the Fed are way ahead of them, I do think, I do think that towards the, maybe the second half of the year, you know, we could get a decent pullback on that euro dollar. But me, my, my, uh, my bias is still to the short side. It's still to the short side for sure. Um, uh, right. Uh, I am still getting confused on how to identify economic cycle of a country. Please, just a little bit more. Well, just 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 think about your own country. Uh, I think it's is it no? I think it's how you pr pronounce it. Think about your own country, right? Think about your own country. Where are you in in terms of are you are you growing? Yeah, are you growing? Are you seeing the G the GDP data start to grow? If you are. Yeah, then you're probably in either the recovery, the expansion phase. The boom phase would be when everything is lovely and everything is, is brilliant, right? But you're probably either in the recovery or the expansion phase of the economic cycle. That's what I would say. It depends on where obviously where you are. If obviously your 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 GDP data is going down, then you know you're not, right? You're probably in the contraction, the the, the recession or the bust slump, you know, phase of things. Yeah, so from that perspective, you know that's really where you are. So uh, and again, you just just by generally having a look, reading, you know, uh, um, and looking at the data, you can you can pretty much see where you are or where a country is. Um, do, 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 Zaya, you keep asking that question, sir. Can you tell me news that affects interest rates and inflation and GDP? News that affects interest rates, inflation, and GDP is news. That says, you know, about interest rates, inflation, and GDP, right? So, what affects again? 
the economy. What makes up the economy? For me, I tend to, right? So you can, you know, if you go on Forex Factory, you've got loads of different, you know, points. And this is why I say all roads lead to um, to uh, GDP, right? So let's say you've got GDP here, right? Now below GDP, you're gonna have all these other data points, yeah? Whether it's, you know, home building, whether it's manufacturing, whether it's retail, sales, da 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 da, da. You've got everything, yeah? All of these little data points, they all lead to GDP. Yeah, they all lead to GDP. Now, while I have a slight eye on that, that's fine to have, you know, to just be aware of what's going on, but I filter out generally this noise. Yeah, I'm aware of certain things, of course, and every single tick that happens, you might get, you know, maybe a bit of bad data there, you might get good data there, good data there, right? So you might have four, five, ten different data points that are great. You might have maybe two that are bad. But ultimately, I'm looking at this number. I'm looking at did GDP grow and or did GDP stall or did GDP shrink? That's what I'm looking at. Yeah, so I'm not really focused on, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't be focused on it. Of course, definitely be aware of what's going on. But all of these generally will add up to this. And also as well, again, the shortcut was understanding what the central bank is doing with interest rates. The central bank are basically the smartest guys in the room. And if you read their statement and they're saying that they're, cont they're continuing to hike rates and they want to hike rates, yeah, it pretty much means that they think that GDP is going to continue to grow, right? That's the shortcut because they're looking at GDP. Anything that you think you're being clever with in, in, in a sense that you think you're looking at something that no one else is looking at, the central bankers are looking at everything. They're taking into account every single data point. And they're saying in their statements, they're giving you the shortcut. They're saying, we've looked at the economy and we're hiking rates still. That should tell you everything you need to know. Yeah, so there are there is a cheat sheet there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Looking at a central bank statement, but also as well, just looking at general GDP and inflation and looking at that data and where it's going. Uh, Marianne, welcome, Marianne. How you doing? Uh, when should we start buying and selling? When the rumor appear or when the news is published? Well, they go hand in hand, don't they? Because you don't really get the rumor until you see, you know, pay attention to certain news, right? And 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 I guess the data. So it 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 really depends on where you are in the cycle. Right. So let's say, for example, Marianne, let's let's focus on the euro. The euro is a, a, a good example because because the euro has been weak for so long. Yeah. And it's been lagging behind lots of other central banks like, you know, the New Zealand dollar, the the the, um, the, the, the US dollar, the Canadian dollar, etc. Right. They're, la they're, they're lagging behind. The rumor now has started to change, hasn't it? Right, the rumor is that they might look in, start looking to high crates. Yeah, so the rumor started with 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 really the the um, the central bank. Yeah, because they've looked at what inflation. Yeah, and they've said inflation is way above. It's like five point. What is it? Five point one or something like that right now. So it's way above their two percent target. Yeah, five point one percent. Now, they've come out themselves and said and given a signal that they might want to hike rates. So the rumor now has started directly from the ECB. So then what will make, what will, what will give this rumor, what will give this rumor legs? What will give it more credibility? If inflation is above there, what do you need to see as a trader to believe that they are likely to hike rates? What needs to happen? Exactly, guys. Exactly, Marianne. GDP data, right? Because the ECB are not going to hike if GDP is still flatlining. They need to see some good figures. So if you start to, so the rumors started now, right? So you could, you could, you could. Price might come down to a level, right? And you could say, all right, then there's a demand zone, for example, on the Euro Swiss. Right, which is a pair that I am definitely interested in buying right now. 
yeah? So prices have come down to a level and the ECB have now turned around and said, we need to see GDP data. Now, of course, I'm gonna to wanna to start to look to buy, right? I'm gonna to have to look to, to buy. I don't know what GDP data is gonna be, but I all what I do know is that the smartest people in the room have started the rumor. Now, they've obviously looked at GDP data and said, well, it's probably maybe about time we should probably start to maybe, you know, start the rumor. Now, they don't know and I don't know. Nobody knows, For, no, there's no certainties. But what I can do is the rumor starts, I can start to scale in, yeah? I can start to add a small position, yeah? So buy the rumor, yeah? Buy the rumor. So I start to add in a small position as soon as the rumor starts. And then as time goes on and then you get good GDP data, yeah? Brilliant, you know you can stay in that trade because then the rumor starts to have legs because the, 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 the rumor, when you're buying the rumor, everyone else is gonna to start to buy the rumor, right? Everyone's starting to look to buy on pullbacks, etc. cetera, da, 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 da. Market doesn't move in a straight line. But the once, once the rumor starts, it's then up to you to decide, you know what, is this rumor likely to happen or not? Do I believe the rumor? And so if you start to believe the rumor, then why not just put on a small position, right? And then maybe once it starts to have legs, then you can start to maybe add a full position size on and start to trade it, you know, with in with, with full positions. But it starts with a combination of of things. So it starts from you know the the the, the ECB. It can start with you know the actual data itself, you know, confirming that fact or the 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 the, the data um, coming ahead of the ECB because sometimes that happens as well. Or central banks, the data can confirm what is happening in the economy and then you'll then what you'll generally see is then central banks say well we looked at the data and we think that that's what it is right we're going to hike rates or cut rates for example so as long as the data yeah is getting better then it can be a combination of things whether it's data or whether it's you know the actual ecb looking to um but that's where the rumor starts but you won't know where the rumor starts unless you understand gdp interest rates you know, or, or inflation and, and, and the relationship between that, between those three. Uh, so I've got to scroll up because I, there's there's a load of questions. Right, I'm going to stay on for another, uh, I'll do another 10 minutes. I'll do two hours, right? So let me just scroll up a bit. So I did answer Marianne. Did that, I, thought, I hope that answered your question, Marianne. But Marianne, you're in, yeah, I'll, I'll speak to you in a bit later. Ambrose, how long are your trades open for on average? Um... I'm not getting into that Ambrose um, because it really doesn't matter what I do <laughs> in so far as I, I swing trade, right? Um, I swing trade and, and that's what it is. We're talking about the fundamentals right now. Um, da -da 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 -da. How do you get the marks? Well, if you're here, then you should have the same, you should have the link um, Ambrose to, um, in that same email uh, to Mark's uh, webinar. So in that same email that I sent, or Mark sent, I think he would have uh, put in the webinar. If he's if he hasn't, um, then you probably will get a link maybe tomorrow. You'll get an email tomorrow. Uh, Alex says, uh, yes, that would be the best thing to do right now. Press conference. Yeah, press conferences can also start the rumor. Uh, but any example, the US had inflation higher than the Euro and the US did not hike rates. I don't know, but they're, but they're going to hike rates, right? They're going to high crates. That's what it is, Alex. Um, they're looking to high crates this year. So the the, the uh, ECB are not looking to high crates anytime soon. So again, that leading and lagging, right? Um, so in the U, and again, we're buying the rumor that they will. Yeah, this is the rumor. So the rumor has already started. The rumor started a long time ago, before you, way before you got into, you know, this. Uh, <laughs> before you got into this webinar. Right, me and the guys in our, in our Discord room, right, we're shorting the euro. That's all we've been doing is shorting the euro over the o, o, over the past year. So we've been buying the rumor way before the rumor started. Yeah, because now everyone's gonna once everyone starts to buy the dollar when they start to high crates. That's maybe you know where you want to sell the facts, but I don't want to get into that because that that brings off onto on into something else. Um, in the U.S. and JPY slides, why is, why, what if US GDP was down? 
would you still go long uh, dollar? Yes, of course not, Lex. But why would I want to go long the dollar if the GDP is down, right? You answered your own question. <laughs> no need to. Uh, why EU was in buy mode? I have no idea what that means. Sorry, sorry, Alex. <laughs> Dan. <laughs> Dan, Dan, you got to watch your mouth, man. Um, all right, all right. I'm so sorry. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Did you want to ask? Did you want to ask a question, Dan? No. All right, then. Cool. Like, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Like, I was so surprised, like, to see see that the webinar is still on. Mm -hmm. But already, I have a I have a question in mind. All right. Do you yeah. know what? Have did when did you, when did you join? Yeah, like I was I was in I was in for like um up to like uh, an, uh thirty minutes and um and so like unfortunately started, then unfortunately started, I, I okay Dan I'm gonna I'm gonna say this yeah unfortunately for you I cannot go over I cannot go over the, the yeah, webinar again I I, I'm 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 afraid you missed it I'm afraid you missed it so um. Yeah, there may be a recording. I, I was I was toying with the idea of a recording, but I do want to generally reward the people, you know, who turned up, you know, for the webinar. And I, you know, I, I I'll think about releasing the recording. I really will think about it. I'll I don't know about whether, whether I'll I will. be very grateful. Like I'll be very grateful. Yeah, I might do. I'm, I'm I may do. Yeah, because again, I don't want this stuff floating around online forever in a day. This is, you know, this is years of hard work, by the way. This is trial and error. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Everybody, it's funny. Everybody wants, everybody wants, wants, wants to share information. It's funny, yeah. Everyone wants to share, and I don't mind sharing information. Of course, you know what I mean. It is what it is. It's not necessarily, yeah. you know, that, but in a sense of, you know, that there, like, there, there is, a, been, there is. I've a, been dying all day, like to to hear how about this because i know I, I really need it in my trading journey like i know it's going to help me fundamentally like i've been having issue like grabbing the concepts fundamentally but mm -hmm. there's a lot that goes into it but trust me this is this is this is really the the, the, the basics but thanks dan and unfortunately you missed it but um you know i might release it a bit you know a bit later it depends uh, let me get through the questions though quickly. One second. Uh, da, 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 da. So flawless says, please. Do you think the kiwi is a bargain now, fundamentally and technically to buy? Yes, I do. And again, this is I'm not giving you financial advice, please. I don't want to give you financial advice. I'm not saying anybody will go and buy now, but it is definitely um, a pair that I'm interested in. You have to be just just careful of risk off. Yeah, risk off sentiment. Because risk off sentiment is um, something that goes against commodity currencies and can strengthen safe haven currencies like the, the yen and the Swiss franc. Yeah, so just be careful of that. But I do think risk off sentiment um, is dissipating. And I think we're probably coming, you know, we're in a bit more risk on mode. Um, so I, I am I am looking uh, for, for buy trades on that um, on that uh, New Zealand dollar. Uh, do you see euro going below? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't see the euro dollar going below below one. Uh, does fundamentals work for indices? Well, I only trade forex, um, and I know it works for forex. I have no idea what works for indices, unfortunately. Um, uh, GDP is lagging indicator. Uh, again, I think I think when people say lagging indicator, like it's a bad thing. Of course, GDP is a it lags simply because um, because they have to collect the data, right? There's, you know, you think about the amount of information that you have to collect, yeah. But it doesn't. Be, it being a lagging indicator doesn't stop and does never stopped us from making money, right? It's all about understanding um, what uh, is likely to happen is happening now and what is likely is happening in the future, right? And yes, GDP might be technically a lagging uh data i won't say indicator but it's a lagging data but it's the most important yeah it's the most important one of the most important you know things that you have to look at right so um do you use other indicators leading to predict if gdp shall be positive uh or negative um i would say looking at look at jobs jobs is generally um uh, a good indication you know jobs employment unemployment is a good indicator 
of um, of whether the economy is doing well. Uh, da, 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 da. So does retail? Uh, no, it says um, does retail sales influence and affect? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, favor, no idea whether retail sales data influence or affects CPI data. Um, Japan economy depends so much on export. How this relate to the value of its currency? Um, so exports, exports generally help an economy. And let me just delete this, I guess. Exports help an economy um, because the more you sell, which is exports, yeah, rather than imports, should boost economic growth, right? So it, just think of your own pocket, yeah? If you're spending, yeah, more than your, uh, I'll think of a business, I should say. So if you're, if you're spending more in your business, for example, wages, um, you know, rent for the building, et cetera, you know, equipment, then you are um, getting customers in, then you're going to be in a, in, a, in in what's known as a deficit, right? You're going to be in a um, you're going to be in trouble, yeah. But if you're selling more than your overheads, then you're going to be making money. It's the same thing with imports and exports. So as long as exports, yeah, are more than imports, it's it's what's known as I guess um, ah. Lord, my, my brain's gone blank. I think I'm just tired. It's called, um, uh, you've got... Oh, surplus. Surplus, that's surplus. it. Yes, yes, trade surplus. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Whoever that was, thank you. Like I said, I've been talking for two hours and my, my mind just went blank. Yeah, trade deficits and trade surplus, right? Trade deficits, trade surplus. So if you've got a trade surplus, I mean, most countries, apart from maybe Australia, I think it is, and New Zealand, generally have trade deficits. But, and I think maybe Canada might have a trade surplus, but I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, basically, exports help you to get to a trade surplus. And if your trade deficit is keeps going down, meaning that you're importing more than you're exporting, it will have the, the effect on your GDP, right? It will have an effect on GDP um, because you have to really kind of sell more than, you, than you're buying. And that's the reason why China, right, China, export more than they import right i don't think when was the last time china went into a recession um i have no idea but because their because their their currency is so cheap and it's managed by the people's bank of china um they can afford everybody the world pretty much you know the uk the us wherever you live in the world generally will go to china um to, to manufacture goods right because you can manufacture goods for cheap and then China will export those goods to the world, right? So they sell way more than they import because how many, how, I don't know if China buy UK goods. <laughs> I don't know if China buy, you know, as much US goods or, or, or European goods. Of course they do, but the balance is definitely not um, from the perspective of, you know, they, they sell more to the world than they probably buy, right? It's just, and that's why their, their economy is generally always, uh, always tip top. So um, the question being is, is from a J J Japan economy depends much on exports. I think most economies do. Um, it would it would relate to the value of its currency. And if we go back a few slides or if you remember, remember the, the, the Japan economy. Yeah, was in the negative for ages. I think it was it was negative for for a while. And then it's only now just returned to some sort of growth, I think. And then it went down and oh, no, that was inflation. Sorry, it wasn't negative for ages. I think it was like, it was like that last year, 2021, I think it was 2022. Obviously we all suffered, you know, with, with, with the recession uh, due to COVID, but I think the recovery was, was very uneven. I think it was down. I think it was minus, then it went into positive, then it went into minus again. So they're struggling with obviously the COVID. Um, they were struggling with, with the recovery after COVID, whereas, other countries like the UK, for example, in the US, you know, they managed to get COVID under control, which then means that they, you know, were first out of the blocks when it came to GDP, right? Because they didn't have as many lockdowns, etc. Same thing with like New Zealand, etc. So, um, but imports, going back to exports and that, it does help the economy directly, um, which then would affect 
you know the uh, the currency uh it's i'm gonna maybe answer one more question because it is 10 o'clock and i did say i'd have 10 minutes so unfortunately thomas or fortunate for thomas but for everybody else um uh unfortunately we're not gonna be able to answer any of your questions but thomas is the last one so how long have you been trading this way what's the average length of your okay i'll answer the how long have been trading this way and i've been trading this way for four or five years probably something like that um and uh, again i'm not really going to get into average length of my trades because everybody's different right everybody um in the group is different um and that gets into really how i you know trade and it's not really about that unfortunately thomas i don't really want to go into it in this uh in this um webinar um but generally i do swing trade right um i do both so not to say I, I day trade and swing trade, but I take short-term profits, but I always leave positions open for, a, for, for, for the swing trade for generally the, the medium to long-term. And when I say always, it also depends because fundamentals can and do dictate how long I hold trades for. Because if something changes, then I'm gonna take, take profit, right? If something changes in the fundamentals, then I will take profit. Um, it's not the only reason why I take profit, but generally I'll have an idea as to the next maybe one to three months what is potentially happening and I will get into and out of trades and swing trade. The longest I held a trade for was uh, was gold and I held it for, sorry, not gold, uh, silver and I held it for about a year. Biggest trade I ever, I ever made and that was uh, something like a an 85 to 1 trade and in fact if, if, if probably a bit, maybe a bit more because I was kind of getting in and out but one of my trades one of my positions end up being like an 85 to 1 so uh so yeah um you know that was uh, and that's all documented by the way <laughs> just in case you don't believe me I, I I did that in the group and there's evidence of that so um unfortunately guys all the questions are uh I can't answer any any more, so I'm going to end the webinar now. I hope you found it useful, and uh, don't forget, please. Uh, you know, Mark Chapman is going to blow your mind tomorrow. Seriously, man, um, that guy is—he's uh, very, very plugged in, very plugged in to what's going on. It's not nonsense. He's talking about what he's going to show you, literally, and what he showed me um, is literally you know, from a market maker's mouth, yeah? From an actual market maker. Not theory, yeah? It's not, um, you know, anything like, okay, well, why cough and all this nonsense that you, I wouldn't say it's nonsense and it's not nonsense, but anything you see online on YouTube right now, these concepts are actual market maker business models. So I implore you, please just turn up, you know, and, and, and listen and really get that knowledge. Um, and what he's about to say. Anyways, guys, brilliant. You're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome, guys. Have a great evening wherever you are in the world. Stay safe and uh, speak to you all soon.